Hi, this is Ben Schwellen. Today I'm taking you into a very unique and less talked about language, the Judeo-Spanish language. What is it? The Judeo-Spanish language, or Ladino, is derived from Old Spanish. It is a Romance language with a lot of Hebrew influence, as well as Arabic, Aramaic, and Turkish. It's also got a lot of influence from Catalan, Portuguese, and other Iberian Latin-based languages. Originally, it was spoken in Spain, mainly by the Jewish population, before the Edict of Expulsion in 1492. So what was that? Basically, the Spanish Kingdom said, we're kicking out all the Jews, and they were already going around forcefully converting people, murdering people, and giving them long sessions of torture. And, you know, the Jews have not had a very good time in history, have they? Ladino spread across the Mediterranean from this point, mainly into the Ottoman Empire where they had less laws attacking them in the Balkans and in Turkey, present-day Turkey. It was spoken as well in the near Middle East, across North Africa and in Morocco, and also in Italy, parts of France and England. These were small communities, but they gathered together in order to maintain them The vocabulary mainly is Old Spanish, before Spanish absorbed a lot of the influences from the Americas and before it took on new syntactical changes after the 16th century. Saladino so to a Spanish speaker would sound quite archaic, almost biblical in some senses. Ladino also has a lot of influence from Hebrew. It was spoken by the Jewish population. Ladino takes a lot of its words for laws and religious things from both Turkish and Hebrew. because of the authority in the liturgical and legal sense, which these two languages have different points in its history. Historically, it was written in the Rashi script, a cursive form of the Hebrew alphabet. It's that here for you. It's also been written in the Eastern Cyrillic script, and it was also, and quite recently, written in the standard Hebrew alphabet. But today, the Latin alphabet is more of the standard used, partially because there are groups in Turkey who speak this language, and Turkey has a version of the Latin alphabet, and so they've taken that as their standard form. As if this confusion over which alphabet to use was not disunified enough, there's no clear and exact agreement on what the language is actually called. So, you have Judeo-Espanol, some. Some even call it Espanol, but I would say, sorry, that's taken by, well, Espanol, Spanish. Some call it Spanolish. Others call it Espanolico, Judio, Gidio, Judismo, which that one's a bit offensive to some people. We'll abandon that. Some call it Sephardi, after the Jewish community that was in that region of Iberia. And in Turkey, it's Yahudice, Haketia in North Africa. In Israel, you might hear Spanolite. Most people today, and more and more often in recent years, call it Ladino, or in academic purposes, Judeo-Spanish. So we know what it's called. What about its history? Before the Jews were expelled in 1492, they had undergone several centuries of a quite golden age in the history of their culture. First under the Arabic language, and then adopting more the Spanish language. Spain, or the Kingdom of Castile, was in the center of their geographical world at that point. But around the periphery there were other languages with Jewish communities, like the Catalan-speaking countries, Portuguese, Asturian, Galician, etc. The influence of all these languages is present in Ladino. These 
spread out groups had to find a way to communicate with each other. And as they did so, knowing that they were all Jewish, they used a lot of their liturgical language or, or their religious language, Hebrew. So the language became sprinkled with Hebrew on the eve of being expelled in 1492, which at this date, them being forced to be expelled, is really what made it become a language distinct from Spanish, because these people were speaking a version of Spanish at that point, which was not located in Spain, and it would have absorbed, and it did absorb, influences from other languages yet, like Italian, Serbo-Croatian, Turkish. As they were expelled across the Mediterranean, most of these found their way into the Balkans and Turkey. Thessaloniki in present-day Greece was the big epicenter of this. And making this video, I found out something really interesting that I didn't know. Thessaloniki is the oldest continuous Jewish community, or has the oldest continuous Jewish community in all of Europe. That's quite special. And in this period, so many Jewish people moved to Thessaloniki. The language, the common language was Ladino. It was not Greek. It was a Ladino speaking city. And across the Balkans, you had communities, pockets of them who were speaking Ladino. And it became a trading language in the Adriatic Sea because Jews weren't allowed to own many forms of property. So they had to come up with other ways of making money, like lending, which led to them becoming much more prosperous and that became a trading language between these groups. So at this time, it was growing. And by the 18th century in 1730, the first printed book, the first book in 1730 was Mam Loez. And it was a commentary on the Torah, the first of the three holy Jewish books, which was quite important at the time, which is quite important. And from this point, there is more and more printed work to be seen and more and more books produced in the language. So that by the end of the 19th century, you had journalism in Ladino, you had poetry and folklore being produced. You had a lot being produced in this language and music as well. And it was centered around Thessaloniki in Greece. We all know what happened in the 20th century with Jewish people in Europe, the Holocaust, or to use proper name, frankly, it's the Shoah to these people. And I want to give you some images of the people from that Jewish community in that time because, well, the Nazis did more or less destroy the Ladino language. It's still alive, but so many Jews were killed who spoke it that it wiped out the Ladino community for all intents and purposes in the entire Balkan region across Greece, Serbia, Croatia, Bulgaria, Romania. So we've lost a lot for that. So here's some soothing music and some images to remember them by. I don't want to go into what happened in the show, how the people were killed, but today Ladino has no official status in any country. And with less than 60,000 native speakers, less than 100,000 people speaking up to speak it worldwide, it's not in a good position. That's quite a depressing, sorry. But efforts are being made to sustain and grow it. An Auschwitz concentration camp survivor, Moshe Haelion, has actually translated the ancient Greek Odyssey into the Ladino language, which that's really important. You need this great work in every language. It's one of the pillars of human reading that you need to read in your life to fully grasp the, the culture and references across so many centuries that echoes from this work. And I think he's working on the Iliad as well, but he's getting quite old. I hope he finishes that before his time's up. So moving on, it's tough going for this language because it has no official language in any country, but it is a recognized minority in Bosnia. I don't know. And Israel 
and Turkey. So that's a start. And Spain in 2017 said that they acknowledge that Ladino exists. Wow, 525 years after you put them in this dire situation, you apologize. Uh, well, thanks, I guess, right? It took you 500 years, you know? Today, music is being used to keep this language going. This artist, Noam Vizana, is quite good actually. I hope you'll listen to her. I'll put a link down to her down below. And they've taken traditional music and made it new and created pop culture, created pop music through Ladino music, which is a really great thing. It's a great way of carrying on any language. Good idea. So what is Ladino like? Well, the phonology, that is how the language sounds and the vocabulary is 60% identical to Spanish. That is a lot. So any Spanish speaker is going to be able to understand what is happening in any paragraph in this language, or even if it's spoken. It is mutually intelligible to a high degree. There are some things you will not understand, but with context, you'll get it. It is an SVO word order. So subject, verb, object, just like Spanish, just like English and French. So no surprises there. What is surprising is that there are a lot of other Romance language vocabulary in the language that are not derived from Spanish. Take this, it means I like working, which is true, I like working. Otherwise, I wouldn't have taken on this channel. So, me gusta trabajar means I like working in Spanish. But in Ladino, me plaza lavorar. So this comes from influence from Italian. That's Italian basically with a kind of a Spanish verb ending. And then you get, so how to say hi, how are you? in Ladino is como estás? And that sh at the end is where it's different from Spanish, but also notice the K. Spanish doesn't have a K. In Spanish, it's como estás? S at the end, not a sh sound. And you will get a lot of subtle differences like this. Let's go through some of the differences now between it and Spanish. The most obvious one is that there are Hebrew words in Ladino. And that's an important part of what makes it unique as a language, this fusion between Semitic and Romance. It's really beautiful. In Ladino, the word for intelligence is Sejel. And this comes from Hebrew. This is not a Latin based word. And notice that J is a J sound like the French jour, not like the Spanish ja sounds. It's not like Spanish. It's like French in that instance. And across the language, J is pronounced like French. The word for angel is mala, which is Hebrew. And it even carries on the plural rather than taking on a Spanish S plural, malahim. And this im ending you'll find in other words that are actually Latin based, like the word for thieves, ladrones in Spanish, but in Ladino it's ladronim. So you have the, the element of both languages in the same word. If it's all female thieves, it's ladronot, because the ot is the feminine plural ending in Hebrew. One more, hermanos is brothers in Spanish with the silent H, but hermanim in Ladino, you don't need to write the H and the M is from Hebrew. Let's look at some basic orthographical differences or how it's written differences between Ladino and Spanish. Take quien sabe, which literally means who knows, and it's quien sabe in Ladino. You'll notice three very distinct differences in this phrase between the two languages. That Q, but in Ladino, it's the K. And even if it was a hard C in Spanish, it would still be the K in Ladino in every case. And then the B and the V are different. Spanish doesn't always differentiate between B and V, but Ladino makes a clear distinct cut difference in every case. So you know which sound it is based on what's written. And then you also have this tonic accent here above the E in quien in the Spanish bit. That's rarely ever used in the Ladino. 
but as you saw from the word for intelligence, Sejel, it is used, and that may be a bit because it is a foreign word that came into the language, which is quite different from how Spanish would use the tonic accent. Silencio in Ladino uses an S. Silencio in Spanish changes that S to a C. So the soft C is always written as an S in Ladino. Take the word for hen, gallina, in both Spanish and Ladino, but Spanish has two L's, whilst Ladino uses a Y to make that long Y sound. One that I like is the J. It's pronounced differently, as I said. So the Ladino pronounces the J like the French do, while the Spanish pronounce it like the Spanish do. That makes sense, right? So son is hijo in Ladino, but in Spanish, hijo. And the word for wife is mujer in Spanish, but mujer in Ladino. That's quite a, a noteworthy difference because in a fast conversation, that would really confuse you if you were coming at it from Spanish. So let's look at a sentence. This is close your beautiful little eyes, the masculine form. So in Ladino, cierra tus lindos ojitos. But in Spanish, cierra tus lindos ojitos. You'll notice that there are a couple differences. There's the S and the C, which sound the same, but different letters are used. But there's also a vowel difference there. It's much shorter in the Ladino. The Spanish have what's called diphthongs, or two vowels pressed together. Ladino doesn't really have that very often at all, and it's a very marked difference with Spanish. The other difference is that the last word there means little eyes both those words together, little and eyes, because it has that ending in Spanish, that ito conveys a, a masculine little. It would be ito if it was feminine. And in the Ladino, ica, ico, it's a k. So that's another marked difference that would throw Spanish speakers off. And again, that j is different. Ojica, ojito. So there, you see that there's a bit of difference. But throughout this, you've also seen that it's quite similar and Spanish speakers are going to pick it up if they are around it for a bit. And I hope that you've seen that this is quite a unique language and that it's fused two linguistic groups that aren't really known to have fused that often. And I hope that they keep it going because it is one of the great patrimonies or heritages of the world that is very valuable because of how rare it is. Hey, Dio Genvaran Mulio, thank you much for watching and we will see you next time.